Hello everybody, my name is Burnage, and this is my review for Might and Magic Book 1, Secret of the Inner Sanctum for PC. You can get the version of this game that I'll be reviewing on Good Old Games, also known as GOG.com. Been a while since I made a review, but I didn't take a break. I was just playing this monster of a game. It took me an unexpected 95 hours. That's right, 95 hours to play through it. Although I was very thorough and I drew all my own maps, so that took a lot of extra time, map making probably makes up for a good half of my playtime. But I like to play games blind, and I also find map making very therapeutic. It's also really easy to do because every map is made on a 16x16 16 16 grid, with each movement being one space on the grid with a total of 55 maps, if I count correctly, and 256 spaces to stand in per map, there are 14,080 spaces of game to explore. Holy hot dogs, Batman! What a whopper of a game! Might and Magic 1 is an RPG heavily influenced by Dungeons & Dragons. You start out by creating a party of six adventurers, or there are six pre-made ones in case you're too lazy for that. There are six different classes to choose from, each being pretty unique and together making up a pretty well-balanced party. First you have the Knight, a very strong frontline fighter with a lot of HP. Second you have a Paladin. Paladin is like a less effective knight, but we'll eventually learn low-level cleric spells to make him a great off healer. Third is the archer, which specializes in ranged combat and can even use ranged weapons in melee range, which other classes cannot. On top of that, the archer will eventually learn low-level sorcerer spells. The fourth class is the robber, which is really only good for disarming traps. Fifth is the cleric. Cleric is your go-to for healing spells, but throughout the game you will unlock 47 total cleric spells that will add a ton of utility as well as damage. The last class is the Sorcerer, who specializes in casting offensive spells for dealing damage to multiple targets. Throughout the game you will unlock 47 total Sorcerer spells that add a lot of utility to this class. That makes 94 total different spells to play around with in this game. Once you've finished creating your party, you're thrown into the world of Varn with not so much as a hint as to what you should be doing. Mind Magic is a very much a game where you just explore the world and learn as you go. As you explore the world, you'll find many different quests to grant you experience as well as flush out the story of the game. Be ready for a challenge in the beginning. You start out with no equipment at all other than a club for each person which isn't even equipped yet, so make sure you do that, because this game starts out hard enough as it is without challenging demons in the hand-to-hand -hand combat. With no armor, enemies will be murdering you, and the cleric and the wizard only start out with enough spell points to cast four spells. But as soon as you reach level two, uh, the game will get a lot easier. Combat works a lot like most RPGs, you move around the map until a random encounter appears and then you get a few options. You can fight, try to run, surrender, or try to bribe the enemy to get away. I only really ever use the fight and run options though. Surrender and bribe only work against some enemies and most of the time they take all of your gold. Plus the harder the fight, the better the chance you get good items, so why would you do anything other than fight? All the best equipment in the game comes from random drops, so it's hard to pass up on an opportunity for an upgrade. Once in combat, you take turns based on your speed. Depending on the size of the area you're in, there will be a certain number of melee combat slots. Usually indoors, it's just the first two slots of your party and the monster party. Melee can only attack other melee, and anyone in melee can't use ranged attacks unless they're an archer. While ranged attackers and casters can attack anyone. If you're in a range slot and you only have a melee weapon, guess what? You can't do anything. Thankfully you can use your turn to switch your position with another person, but the melee slots are pretty much always in the front, so if you keep your melee there it won't pose a problem. Once someone's HP reaches zero, you can no longer take action. However, you can just heal them and they regain consciousness. 
I went most of the game thinking they needed to be revived or something. I didn't know it was that easy. If hit again while unconscious, they will die and need to be resurrected to continue the fight. Enemies won't attack someone who is unconscious, though. It usually only happens when enemies use attacks that hit the whole party. Once combat is over, you need to search to see if there is any loot, and every time there's loot, there's a chance that it's trapped. Anyone can attempt to disarm the trap, but Robber is the best at it. Don't worry if you set off the trap, though, you still get the loot. Once out of combat, you can rest to restore HP and remove most status effects other than poison, stone, death, and eradicated for just the cost of one food. If you've played Ultima, the word food might conjure up some heavy PTSD, but in this game it's super cheap to buy and super easy to maintain, so keep an eye on it, but don't let the idea scare you. Anytime you go to an inn, your game is saved and there is no autosave, so make sure you save often. This makes Might and Magic really friendly for just testing stuff out and risking everything, because at the end of the day, you can always just load your game. It's not completely safe though, because you still have to make it back to an end to save, and the journey back will be treacherous. I lost multiple really good upgrades dying just trying to make it back to an end, but it really just adds to the excitement of the game. That pretty much covers Might and Magic. Now let's touch up on some of the unfun parts you might run into as you play. To start out, poison is extremely problematic. Your cleric needs to get to level 7 to learn the remove poison spell, and before that, the cost to cure it at a temple is a pretty hefty sum. It honestly felt like I might as well just reload if I got poisoned, unless I got an upgrade recently. Thankfully, level 7 doesn't take long to achieve, but in the early game, that's all you want. Another thing is tech speed. I'm not sure what my complaint is here, because you can change it, but it either feels like it's just too fast to read what's going on, or the text just takes so long to finish. I think the problem is just too much text. It didn't take me long to just skip everything and then check the status of my party when it was my turn to see what kind of damage I took and status effects I received. Lastly, a good amount of the spells feel worthless. Some of the spells that give you resistances don't feel like they do anything at all. Then there are other spells that seem good, like paralyzing an enemy, but then the enemy always seems to resist them. In a tough fight, if an enemy resists your spell, you just wasted your turn. So you have to be very careful about experimenting in hard fights. Every enemy has different resistances to different spells, so you just have to try them out to know if they'll work, and 90% of the time, just expect them to do nothing. If you keep trying, you will eventually find the perfect enemy for some spells, making those fights easier. And that's really it. Chances are, if you're struggling with something, there might just be something you're doing wrong. Go over your spell list again, and you might find something important. Like Levitate. That spell is hugely useful in very specific situations. And there are a lot more spells that if you just never use the entire game, you're going to have a hard time. Might and Magic is a huge world full of puzzles and riddles and hints. Make sure to bump your face into every wall because you'll be surprised at how many you can just pass right through. This game is easily one of the best of its time, and it's a must-play for any retro RPG lovers. If you like puzzles, this game will not disappoint. It's one giant finely crafted puzzle waiting to be solved. Like and subscribe or you'll be cursed with low stat rolls and any high rolls you get will only be able to make a robber. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.